Hey everybody, it's just after 5 a.m. here in the Turkish village of Çavuşun. I'm staying in a lovely Turkish home. Every morning, something really interesting happens here, which by the way, Çavuşun is located in the region of Cappadocia. Cappadocia has a few different cities in it, and it's known for some really interesting volcanic rock formations. On that note, let's keep walking and we're gonna see something cool. So I just walked over here down the dirt roads, it took about 10, 15 minutes and I ran up this little hill here. But spoiler alert, all these hot air balloons take off every morning, anywhere from 100 to 150 hot air balloons, which is pretty crazy to think about because Cappadocia has a few small villages in it. The main tourist town here is Garame. Garame has a local population of under 2,000 and every night it has about let's say six, seven, 8,000 tourists living there. And then every morning you have these balloons. Let's say there's 100 balloons with 20 people in each basket. Well, that'd be 2,000 people flying in the sky every morning. So in case you couldn't tell, <laughs> tourism is huge business here. I've been staying here in Cappadocia for five days. I'm leaving after a week. I've been staying in a lovely Turkish home in a nice little Turkish village. So it's been a very interesting and authentic experience. The home has adobe roof, brick and plaster walls, very thick. It's nothing too fancy, but it's nice. The host has been great, very hospitable. If I was going to do it again in more of a tourist fashion, I would probably recommend three to four days here in Cappadocia. Maybe do the balloon ride. You can rent ATVs. You can ride a horse on a trail. You can go on a camel safari, as they call it. And of course, there's lots of trails around here. I was on one yesterday hiking through some of the mountains here. This whole area kind of reminds me a little bit of Arizona. The city of Gorome kind of reminds me of Sedona, Arizona. The way that the nature and the city are kind of intermixed together. By the way, I mentioned this in some of my other videos. About two years ago, the country of Turkey sent a message to everyone else and said, we're not Turkey, we're Turkey. So this is a note to myself, get it right, it's Turkey. It's now 15 minutes to six o'clock. Of course, the sun's coming up. Hasn't risen yet though. And just a quick count as I look around here, I see about 55 or 56 balloons either in the air or about to take off. I'm sure there's some more behind this rock behind me that I can't see, but maybe for today, it's gonna be 60 or 70 balloons. Even on a conservative number of 15 people per balloon times 70, There'd be over a thousand people in the air, <laughs> which is pretty crazy. And like I said, they do that every morning. So that gives you an idea of the amount of tourists that come here. It really is quite the amazing sight. A lot of people show up, even just like me, to see it from the ground. Online, I wanna say that I've seen tickets cost about $260, $270. And honestly, I don't think the flight is that long. It's just kind of maybe you go up, enjoy the view for a few minutes, come back down. The whole experience might take 30 minutes to an hour. Somebody was telling me that he's seen the tickets maybe one day they're 170 euros. You come back, they're 130 euros. But I don't think that's online. I think that's obviously more you're negotiating in person at the point of sale, probably in the city center in Gorame. Every morning, people are out here taking formal pictures to get a beautiful background with huge balloons behind them. Here you can see all the people on the ridge getting pictures. As the balloons have risen here, I can get a better view of most of them probably. And as I look around and I am able to count them, now I'm counting probably 80 plus balloons, which is pretty cool to see. As the balloons are Overhead in the sky here, I'm gonna walk down this hill. I'm gonna go back to Chavasen. And there's some really interesting cave ruins, I guess you could call them, that we're gonna check out. Gorome and Chavasen, they're about two and a half kilometers apart. And it takes me about 30 to 40 minutes to walk into Gorome from Chavasen. And then usually I take a taxi back to Chavasen, which costs about, mm, I'd say maybe four or five dollars. It's a very clear and calm and cool morning here. A local check of the weather, it's 13 degrees Celsius, which is about 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And it was exactly the same yesterday. And the air is very stable, very still. The nearest airport is in a city called Nevishir. That's where I flew into. That was about a 
20 to 30 minute ride from here. So there's really no air traffic to disturb in this area. And the balloons just go up, get a view, come back down. I've walked back into Chavashin, and as you can see, those balloons are still flying all around. It's pretty interesting when you're just going for a walk and there's all these balloons. Anyway, there's these ruins here inside of Chavashin that I'm gonna to try to get to the top of. So clearly people used to be living here. I was told that they were living here just as recently as 50 years ago. And then there was a small earthquake. And after that, they moved down into the village here. I'm guessing there used to be some more wood maybe connecting all this stuff. Of course, these rocks have fallen down. It's interesting to think how they would maybe carve this out. I mean, actually the rock feels kind of soft or maybe it's just that it's Got a lot of dirt on top of it. And here's a nice two bedroom. It's just a beautiful notch in the wall. And over here, some nice windows overlooking into the valley. Very interesting. Feels like it'd be pretty warm at night. Get that fire going. I mean, these walls are obviously thick. Let's see if we can make it to the top. I don't know where this trail goes, but we're gonna follow it. And yeah, maybe we can keep going here. Looks like the trail, well, it's definitely gonna continue for a little bit. We'll see if this eventually winds around and takes me to the top. The balloons are, of course, coming down. I see some of them are starting to deflate a little bit. They've landed, they're letting the air out. Quite a few of them are still in the sky, but they're getting low. All right, well, this is the end of the trail, and uh, don't look down. Well, I just pulled a little bit of a Spider-Man, climbed up here, pulled myself up onto this wooden bridge, which is obviously in great condition as the quest for the top continues. So like I said, the trail over here kind of terminated and looked a little dicey you could see over the edge just be like oh that uh probably not worth it to try that but actually yeah now look i see a little bit of stairs here oh i was gonna say i have a feeling that this probably doesn't go to the top but look over here as uh we can see inside here so yeah people were living here here's some furniture so this would probably be a very very cool place to watch the balloons in the morning climb up here at about 5 30. right now it's almost 7 a.m there were people up on top of here and everyone just left as soon as i showed up story of my life <laughs> but anyway um yeah you can see that this is a really nice overlook you'd be able to see all the balloons rising in the morning but the reality is there's really not a bad spot to watch the balloons it's such an interesting experience to see 80 to 100 balloons filling the sky as the sun comes up. I'm gonna continue over to the edge here, kind of the corner, as we're on top of these city ruins here in Chavashin. All right, maybe this is as far as we go. Oh, hey, a puppy just showed up. For now, he's just hanging out. I guess he likes the sound of my voice. Yeah? Okay. Anyway, we're, <laughs> we're here at where this chasm is. I don't think I'm going to go across. Looks like there's not really much going on on the other side. It's me and my new friend as I'm just standing here in the middle of a sunrise. Literally, I was right here in the shadow a minute ago, and the sun's come up over these mountains. or this range behind me, and now <laughs> I didn't move, but I'm in the light. I guess that's how it works. So it looks like maybe the best way to get up here is on the north side, there's a trail that comes between these houses and then it comes up here and then it kind of double backs on itself. And then you're on top. It's probably about a 10 minute walk. Let's do it. We're gonna take the puppy with us down to town where he can have some friends. I think he's lonely. Are you lonely? Huh? Mm. Yeah, I know buddy, let's go. It's you and me now, Professor Chocolate. I think that's his name. Let's go, Professor Chocolate. 
back down into Chavershin. Like I said, this is this is not a bad hike at all. You can just come up the back side of the hill here. Probably a five to ten minute walk is all it is. Very easy incline. And so now we're back down in the shadows. These rocks with the boulders. Right behind us is a background. This is pretty amazing. Like I said, this is um this is almost like a video game too. We're out here on this quest, and there's just this epic background behind us. Very interesting scenery. We just found a new partner. <laughs> Professor Chocolate. Yeah, see, I told you that's his name. Well, we've brought Professor Chocolate down into the village. Now he can find some of his friends down here, maybe find some people to help uh, keep him fed, keep him watered. Even though Traversen is such a little village, there's a couple main areas. Back behind me, there's an area where there's some gift shops and it's a little touristy and it's right in front of the ruins that we just climbed. Also on that hill or right across from the ruins, there's some cave hotels which are new and nice. And then over here, there's some more hotels. The underground cave suites. There's a little restaurant over here. So despite the fact that this is a tiny village, you can still stay here, be catered to, kind of have everything you need. Go on the balloon ride. Maybe you'll see Professor Chocolates in someday if you come here. And then just down the street from those ruins where we were at, in kind of that tourist part of town as a professor chocolate or maybe professor chocolates and i think he said he prefers to be called professor chocolates and is uh <laughs> is still being a good sidekick on our journey so just down the street probably about a 10 to 15 minute walk is chavashin church we're gonna go check that out it's similar to the other ruins that we saw all right we got a new friend here Right across from Chavashin Church is the airport transfer shuttle station. This is where I got dropped off. So when I was in Nevishir, like I said, that's about a 20 to 30 minute shuttle ride. We did it. I think we did it. <laughs> Professor Chocolatsin, or maybe it was Professor Chavashin, reunited with his or her mom. The puppy saw the bigger dog over there and kind of ran over there. Now they're playing together. On second thought, I don't think it's Professor Chavashin's mom, but I'm just starting to acquire a pack of dogs as I'm walking around the side of the church. At least this big one has a tag in the ear. That's a good sign, actually. Normally, the dogs that I see here are just total strays and they're not in great shape. This is the first one I've seen with a tag in the ear. As we're continuing around to the north side of Chavashin Church here and more of these rock formations, these ones have the rocks being balanced on top of these peaks, which is very strange to see. Supposedly, this whole area of Cappadocia was under the sea 60 million years ago. And then you have this volcanic activity on the sea floor. Obviously now it's no longer a sea and somehow we have these rocks on top of these little peaks. While I stop to take some pictures, my new friends, the dogs, they wait for me. Does that make me the pack leader? <laughs> oh, I hear some more dogs. Are we gonna get in a fight or are we gonna get some new friends? Looks like maybe on this north side, we can take this trail and go on top and then have another view of Cappadocia. This is where we were earlier. Over there in the background is Gorame. And then right in front here is Chavashin. Here's the view from on top of this peak, which is kind of behind Chavashan Church. I'm not sure if the church building is separate from this, if it's just in front by the road and this, this is just more ruins. I'm not sure how it's all tied together at this point. Let's head back around to the front of the church, see if it's open. My map said this place is temporarily closed. We'll see if there's any way to go inside or maybe it'll open a little bit later. Just all the amount of all the carving in the rock. It's like I'm just continuing to walk and it's, oh, here's some. Oh, here's some more. Here's some more. Pretty incredible. As we are going for a walk this morning in Cappadocia. 
Well, that's where we just were. We hiked around this side to the north and got on top there, as you can see. It's basically just a straight up cliff. There's a guy out front here sitting in the chair and he just told me in Turkish, and then we had to use the translate app, but he told me that the church, I think has been closed for five years for restoration. And then down below here is a ceramic shop, which will open at 9 a.m. Right now it's about 10 minutes after 8 a.m. No matter what I do, he keeps following me around here. Well, I made it back to the village center here in Chavasen and Professor Chavasen, my trusty sidekick, has gotten engaged with some other activity and he's run off to live his best life, which is good because I was going to say, I don't think I can just stay here and take care of this dog and be the pack leader. <laughs> As always, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What would you think of today's video? And thanks again for watching, or as they say here, Teşekkürler. Until next time, from Turkey, see you soon.